very quickly, then okay. we'll see. I was just wondering um, what your reply was to Alexander Hamilton when he uh, told you that you come to an accord if you didn't take out the Federalists from office, particularly because one of your first acts, uh, your Secretary of State, James Madison, did was not allow William Marbury to be the Justice of the Peace of D.C. Um, and thereby calling the Supreme Court case. I was, I was just wondering. Well, no, if you will, and, and with due respect, not that you're entirely incorrect, uh, one of my very first acts of chief magistrate was ordered to order a retaliation against the Barbary pirates who had been attacking our innocent uh, wayfarers on the high seas, which ultimately provoked what became uh, the Tripolitan War or Jefferson's War. Uh, no, if you will, it was only later, about a year or so later, that, uh, that uh, Secretary of State Madison, remember it was Secretary of State Randolph initially when I came in, and that Madison succeeded him, and Madison found Marbury's commission in the drawer of his desk. Now, it might have arrived there during the his <coughs> tenure. Uh, and he came to me and asked me whether we ought to send this unto Justice Marbury, and I said, no, why should we? Because what? No, the Federal Judiciary Act of 1801 that had created those 16 new federal judicial districts to which then President Madison had appointed, uh, President Adams had appointed uh, the new justices had been repealed. repealed. This no longer held any point in law. I said, no, you do not have to send that on to, to William Marbury. It's been repealed. Well, Marbury already knew about it. And that's why it was brought to Justice Marshall at that time and, and argued as to whether it should have been sent anyway. He called it a writ demandamus. It had been signed, it ought to have been delivered, for had it properly been delivered, you see, the law had not yet been repealed. So there was more involved in that case and, and very complicated too that allowed then Marshall, understanding the general citizen body could not possibly comprehend such a difficulty in legal matters, matters to write an 11,000 word opinion that took him four hours to read on the high bench <laughs> that ultimately made no difference whatsoever. But in his opinion, to establish what? Judicial review. An idea that the judiciary should have the final word and review anything that might be created in the office of the chief executive, but more importantly, in the legislative body? Where are the laws made? Legislature. Yes. So see here, I have said he might have provided his opinion, but in my opinion, it means not. And we ought to be cautious if we ever think that the Supreme Court should be allowed that advantage, because if it does, then we are allowing the Supreme Court to become like a core of miners and sappers who will someday undermine the foundation of our Constitution, which is vested in the interests of whom? The people. And I know that's difficult, and mind you, this is my final word, Mr. Wallace. Um, I know that's difficult to perceive when we consider the very first line of our Constitution, which is... We the people. We, we the, the people. people. There it is right at the beginning. But you see why we're worried about this is, well, who here this day, as I know it, are not represented in our Constitution? That's right. You, well, madam. You, madam. You, dear, once you reach the age of 21 years, you're not represented. Others? Blacks. Not only the, the, the Negro, Black. anyone Indian. of color. Mm -hmm. Mulattoes, those of a particular hue from a foreign land who have come here to better their condition, as they should be allowed, certainly, through the laws of nature, they are not represented. Others, a white male, 21 years of age or older, and throughout our 18 states that does not hold property, they are not represented in our Constitution. A white male, 21 years of age or older, who holds property throughout our nation, but is, but is mortgaged. mortgaged, is not represented. So, gentlemen, I care not to know who you are, but rest assured you are a minority in this room as a white male, 21 years of age or older, who is a freeholder and passes your property in fee simple. Now, lest we lament and despair that it cannot get better, let's not forget it used to be worse. <laughs> you know what one of the rest requisites used to be? Protestant. Protestant. You had to be Protestant Christian. 
Anyone know who changed all that? We <laughs> <laughs> belong to the Anglican Church of England. Yes, we had to, we were obligated to pay our tax under, and after the war, after the victory, even in Virginia until the reconciliation over the statute for religious freedom, you still had to pay your tax to the American Episcopal Church, or there was hardly any administration to allow it. But but yes, you did. So see, it used to be worse, and that is why I say how brilliant. And it was a Federalist who concocted that preamble, mind you. Uh, 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 William, uh, Governor Morris, Governor Morris, who, who seceded me as Minister Plenipotentiary to France. We had lengthy conversations when he arrived in France over the beauty, the simplicity, the purity of that preamble to the shortest system of government yet created in human history. Our Constitution is the shortest document of its kind in human history, creating a government to check its own power and allow it the whole idea of where that government will go in the future through the very first sentence. We the people. Extraordinary mm -hmm. that we were bold to provide and pronounce that at the beginning to allow for a greater voice in the future. After all, it is but common sense. A child of 14, how old are you? Well, cannot wear the same clothes at the age of 40. <laughs> so our laws and institutions must grow as we grow as a people. So therefore, I've contradicted my earlier statement to you, and it could very well be in the future that we have a woman. <laughs> you know I've written, I truly have. As if that ever happens, I thank my creator, I will not have to live and see it. <laughs> thank you, citizens, for the opportunity.